uh, when I shared the topic with you, what were you? Uh, what what did you send me? What are these? What are these, man? What is this? This is actually the kind of bird that I got in the first Google search. It's basically uh -huh. the kind of bird. This is really cute. What do you think, sir? Hello, my fellow archers. Here at Arknet, we like to delve deep into architectural curiosities. And today, we would like to talk about things 3D. Oh, this is what you mentioned about the things 3D. This is what things. Quite interesting. So, Finch 3D is uh, in a developing stage. Finch is an architectural tool and I was really surprised when I first saw it. Uh, as you can see, the capabilities that this tool possesses is really extraordinary. And uh, have you heard about the generative design processes? Yeah, I heard a bit about generative architecture and generative design process. Uh, the design will be uh, executed according to some parameter that you were given, something like that, huh? Yeah, it is that the parameters that we feed this tool uh, uses AI to analyze those parameters and then provide solutions. As you can see, this is one of the many simulations that the software helps to create. So this is a planning simulation or a planning tool. Certain parameters regarding the function is fed to the software and it uh, develops many options. Uh, as per those parameters, uh, I would like to share some video blogs right? and I was really amused when I was seeing it. Yeah. As you can see, this is an adaptive plan. Yeah, it's looking interesting. The furniture and spaces are dividing it like in something as like a magical thing. So, so many solutions can be created by With just the optimizing these parameters. As you can see in this video, how so many solutions or how so many options are created in such an instant mm. by just optimizing and this is just a generative floor plan tool which is a part of Finch. So I think the possibilities of Finch 3D will be of another level. Okay. So they have optimized, we can, uh, this is just a script on Grasshopper where we can see uh, now again, if you guys are not aware about the software, Grasshopper is a tool. It is a plugin with the Rhinoceros where we can uh, use computational techniques to compute or create solutions. Okay. So uh, we can play with the geometry, we can create uh, special geometries, we can do, uh, we can script random surfaces, we can script designs which are not possible if we are doing manually. This tool can work with any parameter and can uh, provide you a, a solution which can help you in your initial design phases. Uh, like this is a polyline to volume tool and uh, it can help create volume just on the basis of, of single curves which you create on a surface. So if you are just providing them uh, th these parameters of polyline it will help you. Uh, see some uh, really interesting forms which you won't be able to understand if you just imagine it on the topography it will look like a futuristic solution to the design process yeah so it is just for 3d uh, 3d and 2d plan right or there is much more we can explore in the software i think we can explore a lot in this software and uh, as you can see this is a pixel building which they did and for that they just they are just creating a uh, surface and uh, using that surface the software is analyzing the entire or uh, the options which it can create wow it's looking interesting you're showing this is it a kind of thing that is developed in rhinoceros or a grasshopper yeah, they have just used uh, certain uh, scripts in grasshopper uh, the scripts can help you analyze the With parameters the which we feed it so in grasshopper and rhinoceros they have just combined those two and uh, built these beautiful scripts which you can see the result over here. they have made it with the help of right uh, this i think java or python kind of that programming software right yeah so i was when i was looking into fins 3d i was able to get my hands on this article by design and in this article uh, I was really, uh, uh, I got to learn a lot about uh, this software, this tool and how it will help architects. Now, uh, currently, uh, Grasshopper and uh, Rhinoceros is towards, uh, is totally aimed towards a particular 
specialization in architecture like where people are uh, towards computational designing now this tool ca can be used by anyone any designer any architect and uh, even though he is having uh, sufficient knowledge about uh, computational in computation in general so he can use this tool and uh, get the optimized solutions or many solutions by just using this technology basically now the future is near and the limit is just your imagination yeah looking nice it's also telling about the which kind of parameter like what kind of various phases we need as well as the score that is provided according to your analysis and it's it is just like uh, it is like like uh, permutation combinations of various phases and areas that is provided over the parameters now i was just scrolling on the web regarding generative design and this video popped out interesting video which is which was recorded around 2018 uh, and it is talking about the benefits of uh, generative design and um, as you can see generative design is starting by specifying the high level goals and constraints of a project and then using the power of computation to automatically generate evaluate and evolve hundreds or thousands or even hundreds of thousands of design options to explore a very wide design space of possibilities a lot of people think of computers and they think of automation and they instantly sort of say Oh, does that mean you could do everything in a fraction of the time? But for us, we don't think it's so much reducing the timelines where something that takes you a hundred hours suddenly produces the shift. It's the fact that what you can do within those hundred hours. So I think we might get some new software from Autodesk which helps in the, in this process. Uh, but for now, so for now we are just having the pinch. Yeah. the benefits to generative design such as reduction in waste as a designer you can be more connected to manufacturing and as we know that we are working in traditional offices nowadays so it yeah. takes a lot of time for designing and such kind of things activities over there so according to you how much a uh, time or us the takes effort takes for a design to develop in such kind of a design just uh, on its own if we just provide a solution Uh, we we have to make uh, an option for it and share it with a client and then uh, respond as per the comments or as per the changes i think using a generative design or using some tool like that which can help to provide many solutions can help us save a lot of time we can create general options uh, using the parameters which are given to us in a brief and after analyzing ourselves whether or not which option is the best one and a kind of barrage with options and then the client can uh, him by himself decide uh, he likes so it will help us in our initial stages of design i think and uh, help us grow and uh, fast pace any project in a more efficient way and provide better solutions so i was looking into this podcast and really got very fascinated uh, and i wanted to share a few clips of it Yeah, and, and I mean it's important to to we never plan to, and that's that's not the purpose at Finch at the moment uh, either to automate hundred percent of a building just generate because I mean we could we already we know we can just generate a whole building and then it's done, but but that's not uh, it that wouldn't make sense that Finch draw all the buildings uh, so for us. We try to automate maybe fifty percent, and then the architect has to go in there and be creative and just do something. Because, because, I mean, there's there's a lot of things that's hard to consider still for for uh, in an algorithm or for. I think here we can feed parameters, and then we, as architects, our job will be to feed the proper or uh, the parameters that we want uh, yeah. in our building. So. we have to do all the mind work or the research for it and uh, our duty will just be doing the creative part of the architecture and just leaving all the tedious uh, and uh, drafting and technical parts which takes a huge amount of time and we can leave that to computers and ai and leave it to the computers right so if you are thinking about this for architects uh, you are actually telling that instead of wasting the time for primitive work such as drafting calculating and all that can be done with software and we can get concentrate more on the design solution right which means 
they had a uh, they need a lots of uh, design works like in a ground work such as uh, drafting and uh, manipulating this parameters and all so for that thing the fins 3d i think as per you told it's much much more help the software so what about the for a smaller form or something like that basically this tool is not uh, available currently and of course we have to adapt if something like this comes in the future and people start using uh, finch or uh, other tools like rhino grasshopper for designing and planning and everything then of course if we won't adapt or we won't learn from this for example people just adapted firstly they used to draft everything then they adapted to cad from drafting because uh, if they just uh, stick uh, with the drafting and drafting it won't be it won't sustain the, their form so again if uh, they'll stick with the cad instead of switching with, to uh, parametric softwares or uh, advanced technologies then of course their form won't be able to sustain more projects will be given to those firms who can uh, provide uh, better solutions so guys thank you for watching our video if you like the video please subscribe to our channel leave a like and comment suggestion of topics you guys would like us to make a video on in future i hope you had a take away from our video and remember to check out the rest of our videos and nothing is impossible just do it